Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about a really interesting situation regarding uh, Disney Pixar's turning red in a review that was taken down because the uh, the reviewer was being called a racist on mm -hmm. Twitter. And uh, basically Twitter and a bunch of other journos bullied Cinema Blend until they took down a pretty innocuous review. And I got to tell you, I'm actually, the more I think about it, the more fucking pissed off mm -hmm. I'm getting because uh, you know, we read the review and I don't think there was anything wrong with the review. We might not agree with the takes of the reviewer, but I don't think the reviewer was being malicious in any way, shape, or form. I don't get racism out of it, no. No, and what's going to happen is eventually you're only going to be able to, well, we already know it's happening. You're only going to be able to give uh, uh, vetted opinions about certain products or else Twitter is going to come for you. And as we've been documenting for the last at least six, eight months now, Twitter is losing influence unless you give Twitter power, mm -hmm. right? And, and Cinema Blend caved. They took the review down, and we're going to talk about that. They've just given Twitter permission to cancel. It probably wasn't even Twitter. It was probably because Disney didn't like it or something. Probably. Probably. You know? It was some other journos. They, they sound like a bunch of really bitter, bitter they bitches. They do. Um, well, the ones like an EW digital editor. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this came from Mike, Mike Phelan, and he wrote the article up for us uh, on this too. Um, yeah, so apparently there was another review out there. This is not the unapologetically horny review. However, there is... You know, wording about being horny in this one as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so apparently that, since we're hearing this over and over again, it, it's going to be a thing in this movie because more than one person has said it at this point. Well, even the preview for it, and we'll talk We'll talk about that. Before we get into it any further. Oh, okay, okay. Before we get into it any further, first. this is going to be a very ranty video. because we forgot this last time, didn't we? Uh, the, more, the more I think about it, the more pissed off I, I get as a content reviewer uh, myself, um, as, as someone who runs multiple blogs, we run multiple blogs, the fact that Twitter bullied a completely innocuous uh, review off of the internet, it, it just blows my mind that that they did it. I mean, I'd be like, fuck you. Well, before you we know? get into any further. Before we get into <laughs> any further, please, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. Over 260,000 subs, almost Yay! 261. Thank you for the support. Uh, not nearly as many followers as a cinema blend, but that's okay. We appreciate each and every one of you. And um, no, we don't apologize for opinions because opinions are just opinions. Mm -hmm. People sometimes have very bad takes. Well, don't you know having a different opinion makes you like, you know, an alt-right Yahtzee and you literally are killing people. Yeah, according according to that one article on, uh, what was it, uh, some geek site. Oh, they all blend together. I don't know. They all blend together. I mean, yeah, if you, don't blend. if you don't like, if you don't like, like Amazon's Lord of the Rings, uh, the trailer, whatever, you are literally like a murderer. Like, what the f fuck kind of bullshit yeah. is this? Um, so, yeah, anyway, this guy, uh, Simba Blend, he put the review out there. He's one of the editors. And all his review said, we'll encapsulate it here quickly, and then we'll go to the, the actual uh, review. All it said was, it seemed like this movie was made for a very specific audience, and I... I cannot relate to it. Basically, if you read between the lines, what he's saying is this movie was made for Asian teenage girls well, and says, I can't relate to it. He says it's like it's a rip off a of Teen Wolf, basically. Yeah. And he says that um, he says it, 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 well, a lot of these movies have heart. They seem to be going for very specific audiences with the diversity stuff. He said it in a nice way. And it just basically was just like I wasn't interested. I wasn't a target demographic. That's basically all he said. And there are so many movies, TV shows, video games, comic books out there that reviewers can say, hey, I'm not the target audience for this, so I'm going to review it a certain mm -hmm. way because, you know, like if you're not a Star Wars fan and you go see a Star Wars movie and you're like, I'm clearly not the audience for this, I don't give a shit. That's a fair, that's a fair statement, you know? Right. Uh, I don't agree maybe with your opinion, but you can say, hey, this, this isn't for me. I can well, talk about the the pros and the cons. But I it's not read, for me. I read it. We're gonna look at it in a minute. I read it. There's nothing racist about it. I, there's a couple things I can see where they might be trying to to leverage it, but not that I would think it actually crosses into racism at all. And before they get like, well, you just hate everything. Um, if you've watched our videos, how many times have I said, hey, I don't know if I'm, if I'm gonna like this movie, but I feel represented because it's a fluffy red ginger panda that gets has anger issues and calms itself by brushing hair. I'm like. 
finally a character that I can relate to. And I even bought the plush. So this is not because I'm anti or against this movie. I just think this whole take is stupid. No, I'm going to say it. Fuck you and fuck the horse you rode in on. I hate everybody and everything and every movie ever fucking made. So fuck off. Okay. That's what they think you say. Fuck you. Yeah. No. <laughs> Do you need something? Do you need it? Do you need it? I need, need, need to it? brush a panda. Do you need something? I need to menstruate. I need to be unapologetically horny. Well, one of those things you, you already are. Anyway, you figure out which one. Um, I'm manstrating right now, okay? <laughs> That's what's wrong with me. I'm always manstrating. Oh That's my secret. I'm always manstrating. <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, um, that was something. So we're gonna go out to the uh the actual archive of the article. I just can't believe taken it. Down. I just can't believe there's such pussies. Well, first of all, well before we do that, let's I, talk about what they put up. Pussies. Okay, so the the author wrote, I'm genuinely sorry for my turning red review. Thank you to everyone who has reached out with criticism, no matter how harsh. It is clear that I didn't engage nearly enough with the movie. Wait, you didn't, you didn't you didn't relate to the movie you said so. You didn't like the movie you said you didn't like the movie and you have to apologize for that? What the fuck is going on? Nor did I explain my point of view very well at all. No, you explained it pretty well, Sean. I really appreciate your feedback. And then Cinema Blend, we failed to properly edit this review. And it should oh it God. never should have gone up. Why? Nothing you said was wrong. We have unpublished it and assigned it to someone else. We have also added new levels of editorial oversight. So we can make sure that everything's scrubbed before we actually post it yes! so no opinion can be posted. Fucking pussies! You're all pussies! Let's talk about this. I can't believe this. Your reaction is this really over the top. Uh, no, I'm actually, I'm legitimately angry about this. Okay, can I finish reading this? No, go ahead. I'll take it out. No, you can't. Why can't I have a reaction to it? No, you it? can't, but it's like very, like, out of nowhere for you. No, I'm legitimately angry about this. I am legitimately angry that, that they caved. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? It was just an opinion. It's an opinion. Um, we have also added new levels of editorial oversight. Thank you to everyone who spoke up. Mac Rodden, editor-in-chief of Cinema Blend. Chief pussy. Chief pussy of Cinema Blend. Chief pussy of Cinema Blend. What the hell? And and this is the, the Sean O'Connell is the site's managing director. Yeah. I mean, well, he's wasn't gone. like he was like some like little freelance writer or something. Well, okay. that's what they, they here, bring up. We'll talk about that because they're trying to get him fired now. Here is the offending review, okay? And I actually am going to read this review because it's taken down and I'm going to read it because I don't think there's anything about it that I would constitute as offensive um i'll take some i'll let him i'll let neon read if he can calm himself down how why are you the calm one in this video have you been brushing pandas N no but i mean i'm so i'm getting to the place where you are about star wars where i'm so damn used to it that i'm just like oh of course well, no my thing okay again this probably is yell later this is coming from someone who's worked as, as an editor as an editor as a journalist for most of my professional career you, you know, even if they took it down, even if they edited it or whatever, to have everybody have to go out and grovel and apologize to Twitter like this, you've just signed your own death warrant. Like, they're going to come after Cinema Blend. They know you're pussies. Oh, it's only on one side that you have to grovel. You know, if you, yeah. you, can, you can offend and, and be downright belligerent to other people, and that's okay because they're on the wrong side. Um, here is the article. The finest Pixar animation features, in this critic's opinion, play to a universal audience, which I don't disagree with. We all imagine our adolescent toys coming to life during playtime and feared the shadows that lingered in our closets or under our beds. By exploring those themes in Toy Story and Monsters, Inc., Pixar's animators and storytellers constructed comedic yet emotional adventures that virtually everyone could watch and absorb relatable life lessons, some depending on your upbringing and being more relatable than others. Recently, though, Pixar has turned its reins over to Fresh Voices. This is where they're going to start screwing racism. And given them the freedom to share deeply personal, though less universal stories. Nothing that was said there is untrue. It's untrue. Films yeah. like Onward, Luca, and now Turning Red come from the heart without question. But they also risk alienating audience members who can't find a way into the story, beyond admiring the impressive animation that is the Pixar trademark. Now, I will disagree with him on this. You... <sighs> He's not wrong that they're going with more diverse voices, but I don't think just because it has more diverse voices that that means people can't relate to it. Like, I am not Asian. I am not a teenage girl. However, the panda and the getting angry and brushing hair completely relate to. I think you can relate to characters that don't look like you. Um, so for that, I disagree. However, I do not think this is racism. No, it's this is not it's racism. An and it's an opinion. And you shouldn't have to apologize no. and grovel to Twitter 
for having the opinion, saying, hey, I'm, I'm a middle-aged white dude, and I'm sorry it took, I couldn't really get into the story because I don't understand. I've never menstruated, I don't understand. Also, to this person's point, uh, Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. have had many, many spinoffs, and they continue to be perennial favorites. Onward and Luca and Turning Red, I don't think, they're going to come and go. I don't think they're going to do fantastically well. Onward did not. Luca did not. And Turning Red probably isn't going to do fantastic either. But we're not going to know because it's only going to stream it. Now, Coco, uh, Coco resonated with everyone, even though it was dealing well, yeah, specifically family with family and, you know, Mexican and, culture, yes. yeah. And China let it run. China loved it. Um, you know, and I think Canto, because it's about family, it's more yeah. about family. I think this, you know, turning red, I don't think it's as limited. I mean, Luke, I don't think either. It's about having a really good friend. And, you know, onwards about, you know, your relationship with your brother and your father. I don't necessarily think that he's correct. <laughs> this is about menses. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's, uh, as I was a teenage girl once, I'm sure I'm going to relate to this. But I don't think he's completely correct in what he said here. However, I think it's his opinion, and I think he has some valid points mixed in, and I don't think anything that was said there is racism. The, Yeah, that's what gets me. Like, even if he's like, yeah, you know, it was a bad take, whatever. Um, even if Simo Blunt's like, yeah, you know what, we're going we're gonna to take this one down, whatever. But they groveled. They just groveled. Well, I don't understand the problem, because basically it's like, oh, it's a limited audience. But that's not untrue. That's not untrue. Okay. Also, when seen from a bird's eye view, Turning Red plays like Pixar's version of Teen Wolf, only with a female protagonist turning into Red Panda instead of a wolf. How, okay. How is that bad? Because a lot of people compared Onward to um, Weekend at Bernie's, you know, right. kind of. Like, what, right. How is that? And they compared Ryan Last Dragon to, like, Avatar and stuff. Yeah. I mean... That's not a big deal. Complete sequences are lifted directly from Michael J. Fox's underappreciated comedy and translated animation here. Thing is, that's gonna if that's true, everybody's gonna see it when it comes out. You know, no one else can see this yet till Friday. And it might come out that there's complete sequences, and then that makes this true. Okay? If not, then it's not. The result is a jumble of familiar ideas and manic energy that exhausted me far more than it entertained me. And I've heard that from several people. Yeah, if it turns out that we have uh, a female Asian reviewer saying the same thing, then whoopsie doopsie, Cinema Blend, you should put his review back up. Turning Red's target audience seems to be small and incredibly specific. I would agree with this. In Dom She's Turning Red, 13 year old Mei Lin Lee tries her best to balance schoolwork, an overprotective mother, her social life, and raging hormones that have her drawing racy cartoons of the convenience store clerk on which she has a crush. Unapologetically. Un unapologetically horny unapologetically horny um, yeah. Maylin runs into the expected gamut of teenage issues she's obsessed with a bubblegum boy band called Four Town at least it's not Four Play Four Play yeah right but her mom horny. won't let her see them in concert. She's a closet artist, even though her mom has pegged her for more of a serious career path. I've, I've been, I've been there. And yeah. she's flowering into womanhood, which means means Malin's family comes with its own problem, which the womanhood thinks that's sound like a menstruation comment. But yeah, okay, so you, it's it, basically it's it's kind of like girls with overprotective moms who like art. That is a very specific audience i don't see the racism i don't see that's racist turning red embraces the awkwardness of teenage girl experience in the onset of puberty something unexpected in a pixar feature though welcome for the seemingly honest portrayal again there's compliments thrown in maylin's mother for example stands outside her daughter's high school class in one sequence and screams because she believes her daughter has forgotten to bring pads with her no doubt female audiences watching will cringe and chuckle along okay so teenage girls can be can relate to this like your mom did that? No. Okay. <laughs> However, uh, well, no, I better not talk you... about. I was gonna talk about a funny story involving my sister and I and a, a pad on a door. But yeah, I'm let's not, not talk about. She'll that. get mad at me. A subtle and more nuanced story about puberty's effects on teenagers might have been preferred. Turning red with a literal translation can stand for the color one changes when one's embarrassed, which is the way I took it. But she doubles down on the symbolism by adding a mystical wrinkle. Because of a curse passed down through her family, Mei Lin learns that she now morphs into a massive, fluffy red panda every time her emotions spike. There's a team of twist. She literally turns red. And this story hooks, hook leads to all the unexpected plot turns. From Mei Lin frantically hiding her transformation to her decision to selfishly use a panda to win her popularity. Just like Teen Wolf. Yeah. I use my anger issues to win popularity. Team Wolf was better than Team Wolf 2. True. Um, 
Throughout Turning Red, Dom Sheehan and her co-screenwriter co co Julia Chow pepper in jokes and references that will speak directly to teenage girls, be it their bonds over sappy pop songs or the heated lust for older teen dudes. Without question, Turning Red is one of the horniest movies in Pixar well, history. there you go. It's unapologetically horny. Which parents, no doubt, will find surprising. But I think it's, uh, you know, as, as a girl, it, it does sound relatable to women. I recognize the humor in the film, but connected with none of it. By rooting Turning Red very specifically in the Asian community of Toronto, the film legitimately feels like it was made for Dom Shi's friends and immediate family members, which is fine, but also a tad limiting in scope. Okay, like every Cartoon yes. Network show out there, every Disney Channel cartoon show, it's all... Like, we've joked before that so many of these uh, new animated series are made for Tumblr by Tumblr, and yeah, that does limit your audience. Now, it doesn't mean that the shows are bad necessarily, it's the showrunners basically working through their their issues, you know, issues with, on a show. Yeah, it's a running joke. I mean, I'm like, and everything else. So what? I don't. I don't think that's a racist thing no. to say. He's basically like, I can't relate to this because I'm not Asian. I've never been a teenage girl, and I'm not Canadian. So uh, I, I, I enjoyed the animation, and uh, you know, it was kind of like Team Wolf, and, it and has that's about heart, it. And I can recognize the humor. Lots of compliments. Lots of compliments in here too. Turn Red has frantic energy and a manic pace that wears you out after a few minutes. So it's like watching one of our videos or hanging out with me for half an hour. Again, the protagonist is a hormone-soaked teenager who is trying desperately to quell every emotional fit so as to prevent herself from turning into an actual panda. So by design, Turning Red needs to ramp up its nervous system and plug directly into the mindset of a young woman. It's a lot. It demands Turning Red to ramp up to 11 and stay there. It wore me out. Like I said, it's like living with me. While Turning Red tries to lose itself in Mei Lin's creative process, celebrating her drawings and exploding with visual flares inspired by her work, it just reminded me of a far superior Mitchell's vs. the Machines, another film that focused on a female character experiencing a, major, experiencing a major life change, but one that also remembered that a broader audience would be checking the film out, so it bothered to include plot elements everyone could find engaging. As someone who appreciates the guilty pleasure joy of good boy band track, these elements of Turning Red are never as amusing as the movie wants them to be. But the thematic split that tears Turning Red to shreds is the mystical red panda bit, which is radically different from grounded teenage girl faces fears of growing up and often makes Dom Shee's movie feel like two stories working in opposition to each other. There's an audience out there for Turning Red, and when that audience finds a movie, I have no doubt they will celebrate it for the unique animal that it is. In my opinion, however, that audience is relatively small, and I'm not part of it. So I don't, I can't relate to this movie. I don't, I, I don't connect with it. I can see why people might like it. I, I don't really care for it, but you might like it. Racism! Yeah, so it wasn't just, I mean, this. it was a very mild, actually his review was, refreshingly honest. He wasn't going right. to, you know, he's like, Hey, I, I just, this isn't for me. It's not bad per se, but he's like, I just, I don't get it. And that I'm glad that a reviewer actually came out and said what a lot of reviewers, obviously we have people reviewing, you know, Marvel movies and stuff like that. And they were like, Oh my God, it's the best thing ever. And it's like, is it really? Or are you just saying that it wasn't just, Hey, you know, that was a bad take, whatever, but freaking cinema blend, cinema blend publicly calls out the author of oh, the. They're going to change their editorial they're gonna guidelines. Change their editorial guidelines. I am so sorry. So sorry. Well, you should be. And this Yolanda Machado, uh, mm -hmm. she really, really, really has she it in for this guy. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out that she's actually, uh, she works for EW. She's the digital editor for EW. She works for The Rap, um, Critics Choice, uh, L-E-J-A, Latino, whatever that is. I don't know off the top of my head because it's not for me. Um, but uh, she rips this guy a freaking new one and basically calls for his head. You know, blue There check. was nothing in that article that was racism. There was nothing that was racist. Saying that I don't understand this because this is not my background. This is not my gender. This just and isn't might, my thing. It might appeal to people that it's, that it's made for. Right. But I don't think I'm that audience. But it, I found some charm in it. Yeah, there's How nothing. How dare you? I mean, How very dare you? And look at this, all caps. This was written by your managing director, not some junior writer. Okay, EW, this tweet, this tone deaf tweet was written by your digital editor, not some junior writer. As an editor, there's no amount of editing that would have, would have erased the racism. Where? 
What are you doing to make sure he is held accountable and this doesn't happen again? It has happened before. Wait, wait. So what's this person doing? Stalking this guy to see anything he writes? Apparently. Look at, look at this shit. And tagging his bosses. Your editor-in-chief needs to be aware. We're all watching and waiting to see what accountability will happen, including perhaps hiring this a diverse, a, that's what it's inclusive about. crew at fair wages. That's what it's about. There is nothing that was racist about this. It's about trying to get him fired so that her friends get put in the you know, her friends get put in the job. I have to wonder just how racist you all are if that's the managing director. You I are the digital it. editor of Entertainment Weekly. Do you really Entertainment Weekly? Do you really want your digital editor out there calling the editor of a rival publication a racist mm-hmm. publicly? Bad look. It's a very bad look. Uh, very bad look. Um, especially when the review wasn't racist. Imagine all the, uh, again, another blue check. Where is she from? Uh, EW. EW. Oh, wait, her friends? Yes. Imagine if all the non-racist, non-sexist critics out there, they could hire instead. Um, they're standing by their guy. Exactly. They're not doing anything. The blood, the blood what is blood? on their hands. What, the menstruation blood? What blood? What blood? There was... And I'm like, you know what, they're going to give me shit because, well, you can't say anything because you're a white woman. A white woman who said repeatedly that I felt like I related to this character. Repeatedly, I've said that. God, this is ridiculous. This y- Yolanda? Y- uh, that says Yolanda likes mobbing people who don't agree with her opinions. Yeah. So we, if Yolanda's out there representing EW and the rap and going up mobbing people constantly. Yeah. What other damage is she what, doing? What are you going to do about that? Behind the scenes. You know, I, I, I mean, if it were me, I'd be like, why the hell are you out there attacking uh, editors and chiefs of other publications as a representative, a full-time worker for our company? Why are you out there attacking them? Yeah, another elderly, unhinged elderly woman. Out, well, I don't say she's. I don't think she's elderly. Out for blood because someone you know, hurt her feelings. Uh, knock it off, Karen. Okay, Karen likes mobbing people having opinions. Uh, yeah, I read the review. I don't. I mean, other than pointing out that it's very niche. And it feels like what we've said many, many times with other things like she run stuff where it's like a therapy session where you're writing it for you and your friends, which is okay. You know, you're, you're writing what you know. Um, th- th- that somehow means it's racist. Well, I, you know what? Then so be it because if, if that's how it comes across. And come Friday, we're all going to know when it comes out. If it turns out it is ripping off a Teen Wolf and it is doing these things, it's going to look even worse for Cinema Blend. Because they took down a really honest review, and now they're coming after this guy's job. If you apologize once, it's never enough. They want you no, gone. No, I, right. Even, yeah, he apologized. Well, that's not enough. Now you have to you have to be fired. Blood is on your hands over a fucking lukewarm, milk toast review about a fucking Disney cartoon. Do you understand how damaging that treat was? How, Terry? How is it damaging? How much this is rooted in problems and systemic isms in the film criticism? No, it wasn't. Why women haven't been able to see themselves represented in movies had nothing to do with that. I'm a woman. You host a movie podcast with two other white men. You have access to many others. Oh, Wait, for God's okay, sake. that's what it's about. Right here. He hosts a podcast with white men. Well, he should be giving us a voice and giving us his platform. Is that, yeah, that's what it's about. That's exactly what this is about. This is, uh, and we've seen this so many times in, in gaming too. It was always like Ninja must absolutely must uh, bring on women onto his streams. And he flat out said, I don't do it because you know, it, it, you know, my wife, I don't think she'd appreciate me streaming with women all the time. But beyond that, he's like, it opens me personally up to liability because people are going to make accusations here, you know, this is the leadership of a team, the team of the parent company future. There's one non-white person. What's going on? That's what it's about. It's about trying to get people booted because they think like like that stupid soap opera psycho syndrome that if you remove one person, that's going to be you that gets the job. It's going to be someone that you are that you're okay with. It was a basic review. There was nothing racist about it. There was comments sprinkled in throughout saying, I can see why someone would like this. I don't understand it. I don't relate to it. But I think a lot of people who like this thing will find it good. What the hell? Nothing in there was racist. You people look like effing nut jobs. Look like they are. They are effing nut jobs. And it's like, this isn't even your company. This isn't your company. You work for Entertainment Weekly. You work for other publications. Dippo. Nothing. Just hungry, hungry po. Hungry po. Gotta love the old head making black and white headshots to hide it. Oh my well, God. I gotta break it to you guys. You know, by the way, there are people out there that are racially diverse that, that don't necessarily look it. 
you do that know that. That's true. You know, a lot of us are racially diverse and we look different ways. Like I have uh, North African I'm, a bunch of, I, I'm actually whiter than Neon, even though he's considerably darker than me. And his, and then your whole step family, you know, is, is Hispanic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's this is stupid. This is fucking stupid. This is just a fucking stupid, stupid Twitter fight. And it, again, it comes down to pop culture journalists. These are the exact kinds of people that have been uh, running the whole scene into the ground for the last five to eight years because you get people like this in positions of power. They abuse that power and they want to take out their competition using some really underhanded uh, accusations. And it's bullshit. The guy should be allowed to have his own opinion. Mm-hmm. You know? That's okay. They took it down and they'll sign it to the person with the right kind of opinion so that you never get a legitimate fair review. And whoever he or she is, they're going to be afraid to be honest because look how they got dogpiled. Like you have to love this movie. You have to love this movie. You know, you have to. Or, or uh, Entertainment Weekly's journalists are going to dogpile you. Well, there's Terry Hart that no one cares or about. Or Terry Hart or some other rando, weirdo Twitter rando account. Like, I don't care if you have a blue check or not. Blue this would checks not, are so easy to get. This would not fly in any other industry. But because we're dealing with Hollywood, we're dealing with L.A., um, you know, th- this to me just looks like a bunch of pettiness. It is a bunch of pettiness. You know, what did he get? He gets a early screener and they didn't. Is that what, what happened? I don't know, but I, I read that review. And the, the two places where it looks like, you know, I think they're getting this from, I didn't get racism from that. I, I'm I'm actually, I'm just, I'm floored that Cinema Blend caved as easily as they did. You know, uh, I don't know what the hell happened, if phone calls were made or what, but this bullshit has to stop. There was nothing wrong with what he said. Well, this is going to do damage to the movie. Where yeah, his review, is. Where his review, I don't think, would have done damage to the movie. Their reaction to it, I think it's going to do damage to the movie because now people are going to see this, think it's a load of shit, and they're not going to go watch the movie now because they're going to hold the movie accountable. So you get a representative movie. OK, and it's already going to be limited by the time it hits, it hits so that people can watch it because people aren't going to watch it now because they're already like turned off to it over this debacle where if you hadn't if you had just said nothing, it would have no one would have even paid attention to it, honestly. And people would have still watched the movie by your behavior. You're probably doing more damage to this movie than okay. that review ever would have done. It's not about the movie. I know it's not about the movie. They're it's trying not even to about argue it is. It's about them and their friends getting getting put in posi- other positions and yeah. them firing people they don't they don't like. Yeah, just like comics, just like video games. You and your white guys have a, a show, and I don't like that. You should you should be using your show for diverse voices. You should you you, you have platforms, and you're giving it to people I don't like instead of me. And you know what's going to happen because of this? Disney's going to look at this and they're going to be like, "Oh, that was a hot potato. Let's just do a Toy Story five. Yeah, let's not take a, chances on people anymore. Yeah, let's do a Finding Nemo three, and it's all uh, uh, directed to, to streaming now. We're not going to take right. chances. Right, because they they did, and we don't even know yet. We might be good. We haven't seen it. It doesn't come out till Friday unless you have a screener. Hmm. And the thing is, by your behavior, you're already turning people off, and that's and the, and the message of Disney is going to be people don't want this kind of film, and they'll go back to more Monsters Inc. and Toy Story. Yeah, yeah safe palatable right uh, easy so, access congratulations congratulations there yolanda and terry and company you probably just caused more damage uh with your whiny assness that you're trying to get what you want than whatever this this review would have done because it was an innocuous review it was very tame i i way I, to go I, yeah way to go congratulations uh you win the internet right uh ew i think you better do some reevaluation. Yeah, because, you know, you have people going out there and doing this kind of crap. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, anyway, we're going to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.